Hey, good morning. Can everyone hear me? All right. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all for not going to too wild a party last night and making it out here very early this morning. Much appreciated. Um, today, we are going to be talking about taproot assets. Oh, hold on. Do I need a clicker? Just a moment. All right, problem solved. We got the clicker. All right. Let's see. Oh, and we'll go back. OK, this morning we are talking about taproot assets, stable coins at lightning speed. So we're going to be talking about the latest release of taproot assets, the 0 0.4 release, which just happened on Tuesday, and all the cool new stuff we can do with that, of course, focusing on the lightning functionality there, because that is the coolest, latest thing. All right, if anyone wants to follow along with this slideshow, um, and uh, check out maybe some of the graphics I have there or any of the links that I've added in the slide deck. You can uh, scan that and follow along. I'll give everyone just a second to do that. Awesome. All right, so a little bit about me. My name's Hannah Rosenberg. I'm a developer advocate at Lightning Labs. This means it's my job to answer all your questions about using this tech, help you, you know, troubleshoot anything, you know, figure out what you want to do, et cetera. So if anyone is curious about working with this and has questions, I will be around. Please come ask me all those questions because that is my job. And of course, you can find me on all of the various socials, right? Cool. So let's move on to the next slide. All right, let's talk about what we'll discuss today. Again, this is just the latest stuff in the um, new release of Taproot Assets. So we've got Taproot Assets on Lightning. So that's what we're going to focus on today. But we're also going to talk about some of the new features. We're going to talk about how to work with it. Um, and we're going to talk, of course, about assets on Lightning, um, what that looks like and how to work with it. And of course, my new favorite topic, edge nodes. So we'll dive into what exactly is an edge node and how do you work with one. And then I have some cool videos in here where we'll get to see it uh, working. So hopefully those will play nicely and we can check it out. All right, so I am making some assumptions about you all as we are at a Bitcoin conference and we're at the open source stage. I'm assuming this is a fairly technical audience. So does everyone know like what a PSBT is? Is that like something we've got? Okay. And everyone knows like what MUSIC2 is, right? Like we don't have to dive in. Okay, cool. All right. So we'll roll with that. Cool. There we go. All right. So. We're going to talk about, before we get into the lightning stuff, because we're going to save that for the end, we're going to talk about a couple of other really cool things that we can do with the new release. One is trustless on-chain swaps, right? This is using PSBTs, partially signed Bitcoin transactions. Then we're going to talk about multi-sig support in Taproot Assets, so all the various different ways in which it's now possible to use multi-sig to secure your assets. Um, and then we're going to talk about assets in lightning channels and the example that we're using in all these cases is stablecoin, right? So let's dive into it. My clicker is being a little bit, a little bit iffy this morning. Okay. So um, for anyone who's already tried this out and been working with it, I want to talk about a couple of different changes to how we're uh, doing this now. All right, so previously, you would be running a Bitcoin node, right? Then you'd be running LND, and then you'd be running Taproot Assets on top of that. You can totally still do this, but what we're recommending now um, to help everything work together well is to run this with Terminal, right? So to run this with LitD. Um, and then that gives you LND, Taproot Assets, and all these other lovely things, and this really helps everything work together nicely. And I note that here because if you've worked with this before, you'll notice that in my example, 
examples, you'll see some of the CLI commands have changed a little bit, like we're using lit CLI instead of tap CLI, right? So I note that here um, we have, we just released this on Tuesday, but we have lots of um, more resources and demo videos coming out where we talk through this different um, setup, how to run an edge node, um, all, uh, how to open channels, all this various stuff. All right. So let's talk about our trustless on-chain swaps, our PSBTs. And I'm sorry, I'm going to read a slide for the moment. All right, so Taproot Assets users and developers can automatically swap assets for Bitcoin or other Taproot Assets via partially signed Bitcoin transactions. Cool. So we're using PSBTs to enable this sort of trustless on-chain swap functionality. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so you can now trade non-interactively in a chain-efficient manner and without requiring trusted counterparties or a centralized coordinator. Very cool. And I think I got one more bullet point on that, do I? No? All right. There we go. All right. So this is a nice um, non-super technical image. And this is what a, a trustless on-chain swap looks like in my head. This is what a PSBT looks like in my head, right? So to explain how this works and what you might want to do with it, we'll go back to our classic example of Alice and Bob, right? So Alice might construct the first half of this um, Bitcoin transaction, you know, adding, let's say Alice has $1,000 worth of a US dollar stablecoin and wants to sell that for $1,000 worth of Satoshis, right? What Alice can do is construct, you know, her half of this transaction, adding her inputs and her outputs and signing where appropriate, et cetera. And then she can just post this perhaps to a service, maybe just to a forum, right? She can just make this public, right, this PSBT. And then, of course, Bob can come along and say, hey, I want that deal, right? I want $1,000 worth of this US dollar stablecoin. I have some Satoshis to give you. So I'm going to go ahead and add my inputs and outputs and all my stuff, and I'm going to sign it. And then I'm going to make this a complete whole Bitcoin transaction and broadcast that onto the Bitcoin blockchain, right? So this is a simple example. But I think with this functionality, I mean, we can imagine all sorts of very interesting use cases and things that people might use this for. And the really cool part is this is sort of non-interactive, right? Our first party, Alice, just creates this and then makes this public. And then whoever is interested in that swap can come along and complete it. So very cool stuff there. All right. I think we will attempt to do questions at the end, unless anyone has any burning questions about this one right now. All right, cool. We'll move along. All right. So. Now we're going to talk about um, multi-sig. Now, this is a pretty short talk, so we don't have time to dive into depth on the whole data structure of Taproot assets. It's also sort of, you know, there, there are different layers to it, right? It's all, you know, of course, using Taproot transactions and using these Merkle tree structures. And so you have these gigantic Merkle trees, and then you have layers of them, right? So there's a lot going on there, and we don't have time to dive into the details of that. But of course, you can check out the docs, docs.lightning.engineering, and get all kinds of info on that if you're curious about that. But I want to note here the different levels, so the sort of different levels of this, these assets, right? And when you dive into the data structure. And so there's different levels where you can add multi-sig. And this is what's now possible. So we're just going to note this quickly. And then I have a pretty picture for the visual learners out there. All right. So Bitcoin script level, right? It's an internal key. You can use musig2. All right, at the taproot key level, the taproot script, you can use musig2 or the old school K of M. Um, at the asset group key level, you also have both of those options. Um, at the end, all the way down at the bottom at the asset level, you also have both of those options. So let's now look at a pretty picture that shows us um, what we can do there. Hold on. Pushing buttons. There we go. There's our pretty picture. OK, cool. So this is obviously very simplified Merkle trees, right? In reality, these things are massive, and there's lots going on. Um, but you can see here the different levels. Up at the top, we have our standard you know, Bitcoin um, taproot multi-sig setup. And then what's important to note here, so I won't dive too in depth on this, but you can see there's different layers to it. And what's important to note is this group key um, layer. So 
if we imagine the use case of a stable coin, right, and a stable coin issuer, well, if you're issuing a stable coin, you might want to mint, you know, a, a round. Uh, one round of stable coins, and then perhaps you're going to need to burn some, and then you might need to mint some later. And so you have this sort of group key level so that you can, you can do that, right? You can mint continuous rounds of this asset and have them all be fungible with each other, right? So that's important to note. And then, you know, there's various different parts here where uh, multi-sig and various different types of multi-sig is possible. So lots of support for that. All right. So... I think now we are going to move on to the Lightning portion of this and talk about how we can use Taproot assets in Lightning. All right. So we can open asset channels. We can pay asset invoices on the Lightning network, which is quite cool. And then especially cool is we can make multi-hop payments with an edge node. And that we'll spend some time on today talking about what is an edge node and how do we use that. All right, so in just a moment here, we'll show you a video. And in this video, it's just a, a channel open, right? So you'll note that the CLI commands have changed slightly. But if you ever opened a channel on the Lightning Network using the CLI, this will look very familiar. But now you can just see how we're adding some flags. And we're going to open a channel using assets. And what I'll show you first in this video here is the asset that I will use to then open this channel. So this is a testnet node of mine, and I am opening a channel with Leo from Lightning Labs. You know, this is where this video was taken. So I'm opening a channel from one testnet node to the next using an asset that I had minted on my node. So let's go ahead and play the first video, please. And we'll have a look at that. Awesome. So I'm listing out my mega test box. And I'm grabbing the asset ID. So I'm looking at the assets that I have on my testnet node. Um, then this is the command I'm using, note the lit CLI, and I'm noting the asset that I'm using to open that channel, and you can see there is my transaction ID, because that is a um, on-chain, on the testnet transaction to open that channel that includes those assets. All right, so in a sec, we'll go and look at the next video, which is me paying an asset invoice, right? So at this stage, I have an asset channel open with Leo. So me and him have a channel open between our two nodes. I'm first going to show you the balance that is in that channel, right? Then I'm going to show the command used to generate an invoice. Then I'm going to pay that invoice, and we'll go have a look at the channel balance again. So let's go ahead and uh, watch the uh, second video here, um, which is, yeah. So here's the balance of that channel. You can see everything is local. This is a command that you would use to generate an invoice, but Leo did this on his machine. I didn't generate the invoice. He did. All right, and he asked specifically for that asset and that amount, right? So LN add invoice using this particular asset ID and requesting that amount, 50,000, right? And then here's the command I use to pay that invoice. I'm using LN pay invoice. I'm noting the channel just for good measure. And then I'm going to paste that invoice from Leo in there and pay it. So let's do that. Shortly, we'll do that. Awesome. And I pay that invoice. Yep, I confirm it. And we succeeded. Awesome. And note up here this uh, quote stuff. We'll come back to that in a minute, in case you're wondering about uh, exchange rates and whatnot. Yep, we'll come back to all, all of that and explain that. And then we'll show you that the um, balance in that channel has changed. Leo now has 50,000 of the mega test bucks on his side of the channel. Cool. So that is me successfully paying an asset invoice and sending my channel partner uh, 50,000 test bucks on the Lightning Network. Cool. So let's move along. And let's talk about the concept of an edge node. Has anyone heard about this one yet? Yeah, like one person. People at Lightning Labs don't count. All right, let's see. Cool. All right. So I'll introduce you to this concept. Um, what is an edge node? All right, one more time, we'll read some slides. Um, an edge node is a Taproot Asset Aware Lightning node that routes payments between Taproot Asset channels and Bitcoin channels, right? 
All right, an edge node is a service provider with multiple public Bitcoin channels to the Lightning Network and unannounced taproot asset channels with their clients. What makes an edge node different to an ordinary routing node or Lightning service provider is the ability to route payments in different denominations over the Lightning Network. Cool. All right, so that's a lot. And then we'll go back to a picture and talk through um, what that looks like there. Uh, first, in just a second, we'll play a video here. And um, an edge node is called that because it's sort of a node that might you can imagine it living at the edge of the Lightning Network, right? So <clears throat> you can have an asset channel on one end of the Lightning Network and have assets be sent through that channel all the way to the other side of the Lightning Network, but in the middle, it's all Satoshis, normal Satoshis, uh, you know, Lightning transactions going through the middle of the Lightning Network. All of those nodes don't have to know anything about Taproot assets or care at all. It's only the nodes at the end which need to care about it to facilitate that transaction. So let's go ahead and have a look at the this next video where we'll have a look at a little animation of that and then we'll talk through it in a bit more depth. So let's play the third video, please. There we go, awesome. So I got green because we're imagining a US dollar stable coin. Cool, and we can see how that goes from one side of the network um, you know, with a asset payment through the middle of the network, all Satoshis to the other side of the network, again, with an asset payment. And lots of different stuff we can do here. So how does this happen, right? Let's take a picture, um, look at a picture of what an edge node looks like in my head. And we can imagine maybe in this scenario that this is a, say, a wallet provider, right? And there are taproot assets enabled. So they might have a whole bunch of channels set up with users of the wallet. And I put green here to imagine a US dollar stable coin, and I put blue to imagine a euro stable coin. But it could be anything you want, right? We're just looking at this particular use case. And so if we have a bunch of channels set up here, right, these asset channels, and then this edge node also has these Bitcoin channels set up, well, if we have Alice over here, and Alice holds a US dollar stable coin and wants to do her business in a US dollar stable coin, but she wants to pay Bob out on the broader Lightning Network. And Bob likes his Bitcoin, and he wants to receive Bitcoin, right? Alice can update her channel balance with this edge node, send assets there, and then this edge node will send out Bitcoin, right? Does that make sense to everyone? How you, that edge node is sort of, you know, taking in assets, sending out Satoshis, right? So I'm going to, so how, how does it know, right? A question that comes up here is how does this, this edge node know um, how many Satoshis that US dollar transaction is worth, right? How does it sort that out? And so here we have this RFQ process, request for quote. So request for quote RFQ is a mechanism that simplifies sending taproot assets over the Lightning Network, uh, over Lightning Network channels. Okay, very broad there, and a bit more in depth. Um, request for quote contains a rate and an expiration time, which allows the sender to decide whether they want to complete a payment and craft a route to the intended recipient. Awesome. Uh, oops, I'm gonna go back one. There we go. Okay, so now we'll talk about this a bit more in depth, again, using Alice and Bob. All right, so Alice wants to pay Bob. So Bob, but Bob, Alice holds a US dollar stable coin. Bob wants to receive Satoshis. So Bob can generate um, a Satoshi invoice, right? Um, and send it to Alice who can pay it. But in the process of all of these, these nodes are going to be communicating with each other, right? And so there's this RFQ process that is happening behind the scenes, which we won't go in depth in now, but you can definitely check out the docs in the YouTube channel for lots more information on this. And there's this process that's happening behind the scenes where the edge node will provide a quote, right? Hey, you want to send, you know, you want to send out this many, you know, U of a US dollar stable coin and send this many, I think it's worth this many Satoshis, right? And then the users here can decide whether or not to accept or reject that quote from the edge node, right? So this is a process that happens behind the scenes here. So then Alice can send out a US dollar stable coin and Bob can receive Satoshis or of course the opposite. Bob could send in Satoshis and Alice could receive a US dollar stable coin or any other asset that an edge node is willing to facilitate, right? 
So I'm going to show you an example in a moment of um, us doing this. And in a moment, I'll show you um, uh, me being Alice and Leo being Bob. And Leo created for me a Satoshi's invoice. And I paid it using my assets, right? So in a moment, I'll show you a little clip of that working on the command line. But first, a question that I often get here is, well, who can be an edge node? And how do you do this, right? And of course, this is Bitcoin. So the answer is anyone with a computer and an internet connection who wants to do it, right? So if, and again, we have more resources on this coming out. But the idea is if you have a Lightning node, you can update it to run Taproot assets. You can set some config. Now, in production, what you would want to do is have some sort of price oracle that you would connect to, right? Whether that's an exchange, that's your own custom things. There's an example in the repo if you want to check it out. But you would have some sort of service that you would ping for the latest and greatest information on um, exchange rates to feed your node. But you put some settings up, and you run your node, and you open some asset channels, and that's it. You're an edge node. That's how it works. Anyone who wants to can do this. Cool. So now that we've got all that out of the way, um, I, ooh, it looks like we're missing a video. Can we play that last video, please, which is showing this multi-hop payment? So Leo generated for me a, um, yeah, excellent. So this is an invoice, a Satoshi's-based invoice. I'm going to use LN Pay Invoice. I'm noting the channel, and I'm going to pay the Satoshi's invoice using this asset right here my mega test box. So Leo sent me a SATS invoice, and I am paying it using an asset. This is routing through Leo's node here. It was functioning as the edge node. And that worked. And you can see there, it's a multi-hop payment. And you can see the whole RFQ process that happened behind the scenes. Cool. So that is proof that we can do multi-hop payments through an edge node. We can send out assets and receive Satoshis. Quite cool. All right, I've got a minute and 45 seconds left. So I think we don't have too much time for questions, but I will be around, hang around here if anyone has questions. Again, please ask me many of them. It's my job to answer them, so I will do so. Um, if you are curious about this, Oh, we put the slides down. All right, so in the slide deck, there's um, lots more resources at the end. Um, also, please go to docs.lightning.engineering, and there's a ton more information. And again, I'll be right over here if anyone has any questions. Thank you all.